Hi, this is Steve Laskovich of Luminous Works, and I'm here to talk to you about making 3D models in Adobe Illustrator. Now, there's a lot you can do in Illustrator these days, especially in the current version, 2022. For example, take this. I have this picture of whatever that is, but I wanted to make this cool looking 3D thing out of it. And now we can uh, in Adobe Illustrator. We have this wonderful extrude or revolve function that we can apply. And we can apply materials that come from Adobe's companion suite called Substance. And some of those substances have found their way here to Illustrator. So awesome, except not always. For example, if you want objects with different materials applied to them, and you want them to interact in some way to form a full scene, yeah, that doesn't look quite right. Plus, you'll notice that one of those objects, um, as it goes off into the distance, kind of looks like it's getting fatter as it goes back. Well, that's because right now, as we have Illustrator, there is no perspective control, or sometimes called field of view. Compare that or contrast that with Adobe Dimension, for example, or other 3D programs where we can have objects truly interacting and casting shadows on each other and, of course, going away in perspective. So I want to get the best of both worlds. I want to have the ease of drawing that I have in Illustrator, because I'm okay in Illustrator, and then I want to be able to take what I make and bring it over to another program like Adobe Dimension, or if you're lucky enough to have a subscription to Substance, you could do Substance Stager, which is nearly identical, or even to a full-fledged 3D program like Blender which is also pretty cool, but definitely a, a, a more difficult thing to learn, but maybe satisfying nonetheless. But how do we get out of Illustrator? <laughs> now, and also why? Um, for me, what motivated this was my desire to take this photograph of the exterior set of Rick's Café Américain from Casablanca, it being the 80th anniversary of the movie, and plus I'm utterly obsessed with this picture, and make a, a color version of it completely from scratch. I was going to do that in Photoshop, and I realized, hey, you know, some of these shapes lend themselves to Illustrator, so why not use Illustrator? Then I discovered the perspective problem and the rest. So let's talk about how to overcome that. I was lucky enough to find the original plans that the studio used to build the exterior set for Rick's Cafe. So I traced those in Adobe Illustrator and created extrusions for the archway, the backing of the neon, and the neon lights themselves. Then I could export those extrusions as the OBJ files I needed. Pretty cool. First, of course, you have to make a 3D model in Illustrator, or at least a 3D extrusion. So here's the archway I was able to trace out. Now, if I wanted to make it look extruded, I need to put the 3D and materials effect on it. Well, I can use the bottom of the appearance panel to get to effects. I can use the effects effect menu at the top of Illustrator, and I can choose 3D and materials, extrude and bevel. And when I do, the process begins. The 3D and materials panel allows me to choose just how deep a bevel, or rather deep an extrusion that is. And if I wanted it to have a bevel, I can hit the switch and it can bevel in a number of ways from classic to round, which is what I ended up using for the neon. Uh, and I can control how far into the object that bevel goes. In the case of the neon, it's all the way. Here, I'm not going to have any at all. I just wanted a nice arch. Now, what does it export out of Illustrator when I make a proper 3D model is the view I have, nor the appearance of the object, which also includes the materials that I might want to apply to it, whatever those are, uh, whatever that is. It could be anything, but that won't make it out. <laughs> nice gold leaf uh, archway. Nor will the lighting I choose to use and any shadows I might decide to enable. But so you know how those work, if you're getting a good enough result from within Illustrator, uh, you can use the 3D materials panel to put materials on. I'm going to actually choose to leave that as the default. And back under lighting, I'm going to show you here how you can enable shadows and whether they're behind the object as if it's stuck on a wall or below the object as if it's sitting on a surface. And then the lighting will have to be adjusted as a rotation, and you'll see something similar to this in either dimension or uh, substance stager. So you can change the angle of the light, you can change the altitude of the light so it's more overhead or closer to the horizon, 
and how soft it is, or in dimension, how cloudy it is if it's sunlight. All cool stuff, but most of this does not make it out of Illustrator when we export as a 3D model that we can import into Dimension and other 3D programs. Just the fact that it's an extrusion and should be interpreted as a 3D model. Let me actually give you a closer look at how I extruded the neon, for example. I start off just tracing with either the curvature tool or the pen tool or something, the, the letters that I wanted. I used rounded caps to make it a little more neon tube-like and also maybe any corners look a little less cornery. And then I use the extrude feature. And you'll see here in the 3D materials, 3D materials panel, um, that there is some depth to this, which I left on the archway, as you might've noticed back here, but I did not keep the depth on the neon. I just wanted the, I wanted a bevel, which I also engaged and made that a round bevel that covers the whole width so that when I look at it like this straight on using the front view, straight on front view, I kind of get a sense of a tube, like a neon tube, which is what I was after. So once I had the neon done and the arch done with some extrusion on them and using probably the front view for most, I dragged each of these elements into the asset export, gave them names that I would be able to recognize later. And here's the best part. I selected all three, or it could be 30, you know? And down here at the bottom of Asset Export, I was able to choose OBJ. And that's the format I need to pull into Adobe Dimension or Stager. And I could also import that into Blender and other 3D programs as well. So it's a pretty widespread format. So I selected these three and exported them. And then I pulled them into Dimension in my case. Let me show you that. So I, here I am in Adobe Dimension. I use the File, Import, 3D Model Import, Command-I or Control-I for import. That's nice and easy to remember. And I pulled each of those shapes in and messed with their sizes a little bit. There's easy ways to do that and to move them and to rotate them as you need. I chose not to rotate them too much, um, just get them sized about right if they weren't already. And you'll see I have a number of uh, substances already applied, like a concrete texture here. But of course, the straight on view is not what I want to match that photo. So I was able to also pull in that photo as a background image so I can change my view, you know, orbit and zoom as necessary to get the perspective approximately right. And eventually I got it fairly good. And I was a little puzzled. Uh, when I looked at this, I was like, I can't quite nail it. And I was very puzzled why. I noticed the doorway and the doors themselves there are fairly vertical. Not perfectly, but fairly vertical. And then it struck me, 1940s, early 40s, what kind of camera might have been used? And I realized it was probably something like this, which has some perspective control, which they might have done for a publicity shot, you know, to make the doorway look a little neater instead of converged. And, you know, I can picture this camera in someone's hand. I can almost see the photographer. Yeah, probably not him. Anyway, so I had a little trouble, but I decided, okay, I have the camera that I've got inside Dimension. That's going to be fine. So I went with that. I massaged the angles a bit for both the arch. I added an extra bit of a plane here to be the wall behind the neon and the backing. And um, I told the neon itself to actually have a glow to it. And there's a way to establish a glow. Very cool. And so that as the file would render, the lights that I en enabled in the scene, plus the neon light itself, would get the whole scene a glow. And eventually, I would be able to export that, render that, with the render function here in dimension, and I was able to render that to a Photoshop file. And that looked more or less like this. And now I spared you the time it takes to render. It, <laughs> it can take a while if you want it to look good. And as you can see, I used a concrete texture that I have filling in the role of plaster, because that's what the set called for, a little darker on uh, behind the neon. Um, yeah, it came out pretty good, I think. 
Um, also, to give that neon an extra little bump, luckily when we render, Dimension is kind enough to give us a few extra Photoshop layers, and some of them, the way they look, enable us to make really careful selections of each material or by depth or what have you. So I was able to make a selection of the neon, and with that, I was able to give it a little extra glowiness, a little glow on the outside, a little glow on the inside, give it a nice bit of shine. And I am obviously showing you screenshots here because the number of layers in the final were was substantial. But I was able to also add, you know, some proper uh, shadowing from palm leaves. Now those were illustrator illustrated palm leaves that I put into Photoshop as smart objects to use them as shadows. I created those doors in the doorway, and I even created those clubos on the doors in Illustrator, and I just left it be Illustrator's own 3D features and just pasted them in here. That came out fairly good, I think. And just for fun, I decided, what would that look like as a black and white picture with a light red filter, probably what the photographer might have used. And I thought that was pretty, a pretty nice faithful rendition of the original photo. I was, I was tickled. But this is the version I was really after. I wanted it in color. Not that I'm into colorizing movies, but this shot for sure. So that's the process of creating a illustrator bit of artwork, just using the 3D materials and exporting with asset export as OBJ. And then you can bring that into a proper 3D program. To learn more about Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign or After Effects or Premiere or pretty much anything Adobe and more, head on over to LuminousWorks.com. We'd love to see you there.